Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at this realistic 35 watt solid state PA amplifier. Picked this up in a thrift store the other day, priced at $14.99, got the senior discount so, you know, 12 bucks or so. This is intended, you can tell from the layout of it, for a kind of a professional use to sit on a shelf in a store or something. Uh, the back feet are shorter so it gives it kind of a upward slope. We can see some of the features right on the front. We've got two microphones and a phono slash aux input, tone, volume, power, power light. Let's look at the back to get more of an idea of what type of unit this is. We've got our two microphones which are quarter inch phono plugs aux and phono so aux is probably a line level input phono is probably a phono input left and right we've got different speaker outputs for different uh, impedances 16 8 is usually the standard for speakers but it can be more or less for we've got common we've got 70 volts which is probably 70 volts DC which is available as uh, what's called ghost power to power condenser mics that's kind of my guess priority what I think this probably is is if you short these two terminals you get the microphones coming out as opposed to the um, aux or phono which we select with a switch here you know, fuse, power cord, other basic stuff. This is a pretty hefty unit. I haven't tried this unit out yet, but uh, I'll do that next. And then we'll open the lid on it and see what's inside a little later. I hooked the unit up to this little KLH bookshelf speaker I had. It's rated at 6 ohms. So we could probably use either 8 or 4 here, but uh, I chose 8. Got a little dynamic microphone plugged into the mic one input. So we'll turn around and uh, see what happens. Got all the controls set to zero. Turn it on and see if the little power light comes on. Okay, I heard a little click through the speaker, so that's probably a good sign. Is anything coming out? Yes, it's definitely working through the mic one input. Here's tone. Here's tone. Here's tone. The master volume was working fine on this. This plastic piece is just a passive item that I think is used to set the nominal volume let's say you decide six works best for your application so um, you can set you can set it to six to prevent feedback and then you realize you need to go to four now we've got a speaker but no feedback so that's good I'm going to assume that the uh, other features work for the purposes of this video. I'll check those out separately on my own. But next we're going to pop the lid and see what's inside. Scooter just came along and he seems concerned that he's not part of the video so I'm dragging him in. Here's something interesting. Do not remove cover. No user serviceable parts inside. In other words, you should throw this away if it doesn't work or take it to a thrift store. So let's see what we've got here. If Scooter will get his nose out of it. Here, Scooter, you need to go away. So, let's see. We've got a pretty hefty transformer here. That goes with the weight of the unit. Here's a pretty uh, hefty heat sink with convection cooling through the grill vents as well as through the overall chassis, the way it's bolted down. Um, 
we've got a couple of power transistors probably a push-pull amplifier arrangement to get our 35 watts we've got a smaller transformer here that's uh, looks like this is basically the audio transformer because I see it connecting to the different um, impedance outputs so let's say we come in with a single impedance maybe a higher voltage and then we reduce the voltage and provide different impedance taps here's our little interface board back side of our microphone connectors so here's the back side of the uh, front panel sliders you can see those in action the back side of the big volume knob that has a nice solid feel to it the back side of the tone control let's look at the power supply part of this get a fuse a bridge rectifier which is uh, standing in the air for kind of cooling purposes uh, filtering capacitors at several levels we've got some big ones as the main power supply capacitors some kind of medium-sized ones that maybe help with our surge audio um, we've got a small IC here that looks like maybe an op amp a single transistor there that might be a power driver transistor some smaller signal transistors here's a adjustment pot of some kind some power resistors that are kind of standing in the air to uh, give a little passive cooling so all of our capacitors are in good shape no bulges on those it works uh, and even though this unit was explicitly sold as is which is what this thrift store has kind of gone to recently so overall this unit is in very good condition not even any dust inside it that I can see uh, all the capacitors are appear to be good from a visual point of view uh, nothing is toasty or overheated so after I check out the additional features um, notably the second mic and the aux phono I'm going to uh, be able to say that this is a good unit now let's talk about what the use case is for something like this suppose you don't have a PA in a store or something uh, you know use it as a PA at a community event or church or something like that that's one possibility but you can also think of this as a 35 watt mono amplifier with microphone inputs as well as this phono aux so we have a lot of flexibility here we can use microphones literally guitars work at a uh, basically a microphone level so you could plug a guitar into this directly you got line level for aux on phono we've got left and right but this is a mono system so it's going to combine those two um, probably unless you're using this as a PA you may not ever use the phono input itself so I think that wraps it up for this video so thanks for watching and bye bye